Hello and welcome to this first video on Postgres SQL Relational Database Management System. In this video, I'm going to show you the A to Z of how to load datasets in CSV file to Postgres using the general user interface query tool. So let's get started. Now, if you've not joined this channel, please click on the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon to get notification of new videos. So without much talking, let's dive in. Now, this is the data set that we want to load to the Postgres. And when I press Ctrl down arrow key, we can see that we have 979 rows of records, including the header in row number one. Now, what I'm going to do first is to go to my C drive and create a folder called file. Now, in that file, I'm going to save a copy of this data set using the CSV UTF, that is Unicode Transformation Format with 8 bits. Now, let's do that. I'm going to come here and double click on this and right click and choose new. And I choose folder. I'm going to call it, you know, files. Click OK. Now, come back to Excel. I'm going to F12 and very importantly, I need to specify the save as type. Now, if you choose CSV comma delimiter, it's not going to work when you're writing a statement to load or to copy the data in the GUI of the Postgres query tool. So you have to choose this CSV UTF Unicode transformation format with 8 bits comma delimiter. So I choose this and I'm going to call the file sales and then i'm going to save in that location that i created okay see my c drive okay click on this and i choose the files so i'm going to save it here okay so when i come back to my c drive you can see and i open this file so i have a copy of this saved so what i'm going to do is to go to the general user interface of the postgres so I click on this elevate icon now as the database administrator or as the super user you need to provide your password that you set up when you install the postgres or the local machine so my password is going to be typed in okay and i click okay i can see we have to the left here we have the servers so when i click on this to expand i can see postgres version 15. now we have two databases the first one is postgres which is by default created for you and i have this my personal transaction underscore data database so you can see we have two now under the database created we have what's called schema now basically schemas are named collection of objects such as tables views indexes sequences stored procedures triggers and so on okay i can see by default we have public schema which of course is created for you without you doing anything so let's say you want to create your own personal schema you can do that so to create your personal schema i can right click on this and choose query tool okay and when i open the query tool i can see this canvas i can type in my code and execute now the first thing i want to do is to create a schema that is called f sales so i'm going to write a simple create schema and i'm going to call it f sales put in a semicolon then i can copy it and click on this run button or press the f5 on your keyboard okay the moment you do that you can see create schema query returned successfully in 108 milliseconds that's fine you can see we have total number of rows zero of zero now when i come back and refresh you can see we're gonna have two now i have my own f sales schema now very importantly you need to come to files and choose preferences because many times if you newly installed postgres on your system you might have problem of having to set your path file so click on preferences and scroll down to binary paths okay now in the binary part you scroll down here now i'm using postgres version 15 okay which is what i have here now you're going to see postgres sql binary path so i'm going to click on this icon and then i want to set it to this my bin so let me just go through this step for you click on the c drive okay this is my c drive now i'm going to choose programs 
and I'm going to look for Postgres. Let me scroll down. So this is my Postgres, and this is version 15. Now inside your bin, click on it, and then you have to select this folder. So you can see Program Files, Postgres SQL version 15, and bin. So you're going to see this. That is very important. Okay. Now after we have done that and created our schema, let's see the data that we want to copy into there. Now you can see we have some columns such as order ID, order date, customer name, customer type, account manager, product name, product category, and total columns. So I'm going to come back to the general user interface here, and I need to create that table that's going to house the data that we want to copy into the table. So let's create the table. I'm going to say create table, and I'm going to call the table sales. I can see my create table is in capital letter now that's the right convention where the name of your table is in small letter now i need to specify the columns and the columns data type at the front. so i'm going to type in order id i'm going to call it integer data type i'm going to put in a comma and the next column is order date so i'm going to type in order date now i'm going to give it a date data type comma now let me check other columns name next is customer name customer type and account manager. So let's go ahead. I'm going to type in customer name. So I'm going to give this one a varchar of 30 characters in length, put in a comma. Next one is customer type, customer type. I'm going to call this one also a varchar, varchar of Let's say 30 characters in length, put in a comma. Now I'm going to click enter to jump to the line number four in order to make it more readable. Okay. Now the next column is account manager. Account manager. And this is also going to be varchar of let's say 30 in length, comma. Now the next, let's check it out. Is product name, product category, and total. Okay. So product name okay let me type it correctly product name it's also going to be varchar i'm going to give this one a hundred characters in length so the next one's going to be product category okay let me just move to the next line here click enter product category and this is also going to be a variable character a variable character of let's say 30 in length finally the last column is total and i'm going to call this one numeric data type okay so i'm going to put in a semicolon at the end of the statement now let's go through it now we're, we started by writing create table and the name of the table is sales and the first column is order id with int data type the next column is order date with date data type next column is customer name with varchar of 30 in length next is customer oh this is an error customer type and it has variable character of 30 in length next column is account manager with 30 variable character product name 100 product category vaca of 30 and the last column is total now when you check here you can see we have the same thing other id other dates customer name customer type account manager product name product category and total now i'm going to come back here now i proceed to run this create table it's going to be created under the default schema that is called public. Now, let me show you clearly. I'm going to scroll down. Now, you can see under the public schema here, we only have a table called data. Now, let me go and execute this and click on this execute button. You can see create table query returned successfully in 129 milliseconds. Okay. Now, when I refresh this, you can see it's going to display under the tables here can you see it's not created under the fcs now that is not what i want that is why if you are creating a table it is always important for you to specify the schema name first before the table name now what i'm going to do is to go ahead and drop this table so i'm going to write a simple drop table and i'm going to call the name of the table now i can just call it sales since it's going to be coming from the public schema so let me just execute this okay let me copy it execute this you can see drop table and query return successfully now when i refresh this you can see the table is gone okay 
All right. Now, in order to create this table under the FCO schema that we created, I'm going to come here. I'm going to call this one FCO. So this is going to be the name of the schema and the name of the table. Now, when I go ahead and execute this and click on execute, you can see create table query returned successfully in 222 milliseconds. Let me just delete this. Now, when I come back here and let me just refresh all the schema, refresh, and I come to the FC schema okay and I scroll down to the table okay so when I expand this table you can see now we now have it under the correct schema so that's the convention now when I write a simple select all as I want to select all the columns from I need to specify the name of the schema fsales.sales put in a semicolon and I run this query you can see now we have all the columns without any rules of records in it okay now let's go ahead and read the data that is coming from these csv file located in the files of the c drive so i'm going to come here so i'm going to write a simple copy now i want to copy and to specify the name of the schema fcs sales now the sales is the name of the table i'm going to see from where now, inside the single quote, I'm going to come right here. Now, I'm going to copy this path, Control c come back here, Control v backward slash. Now, I need to type the name of the file, which is sales. So, I'm going to come here. I'm going to say sales.csv. Then, I need to specify that this is a delimiter. Now, inside the delimiter, I'm going to, inside the double single quote, I'm going to put in a comma delimiter. And then, I'm going to csv and it contains headers now the first line is the error put in a semicolon and let's go through the code again copy to f sales dot sales now there is a two year but we don't write it okay copy to f sales dot sales table from my c drive that is from the files folder and the name of the file is sales dot csv and then you have to type in delimiter and inside the single quote put in a comma type in a csv and it contains error now the moment of truth is here when i copy this and i execute you can see copy nine seven eight rows you can see query return successfully in 123 milliseconds now when i come back here and i execute you can see now we've been able to successfully copy the data from the csv file to postgres using the general user interface query tool you can even interact further with the data by using the where clause let's say i want to filter this data for that i can see where let's say customer type equals to corporate inside the single quote i'm going to type in corporate I can even use multiple criteria by using an account manager equals to inside the single quote. Let's see, I want to view by Natasha Love, Natasha Love, and then I don't forget my semicolon to terminate the statement. Now, when I run this query, you can see that's awesome successfully run total query runtime 136 milliseconds and it returned 32 rows okay now when you move this up you can see we are filtered by the customer type that equals to corporate and the account manager that equal to natasha love okay so this is essentially how we can copy or load data set from csv file to postgres so i hope you enjoyed this video if you do like comment share because there's a lot more videos to come on postgres and my sql relational database management system thank you and bye for now cheers